biologically arrogantly look at the underlying reasons for disease. We are today trying to hit one enzyme, one receptor, and we believe by doing so, we will see the effect will cure the disease. This is the linear discovery and development model. The linear model hitting one target will fix the problem. This is the consequence, in my view, of those attempts. This is just a recent paper in Nature Radio Drug Discovery that tries to put mathematics behind the fact the curve you have seen over and over again of the costs of R&D rising exponentially. And at a certain point in time, we're going to run out, run out of money. If we continue on that curve, we're going to run out of money. So clearly, that's also something to be um, taken into the considerations. This is the only business line I'm going to show you. And then I will make it simpler. But it shows the, how well we were as an industry in returning um, value to shareholders. You can see pharmaceuticals at the top, and from 85 to 2000, 20.3% return. I'm making it simpler here. We are now not returning value to shareholders. On average, they're losing money on our industry. So let's just um, hold on for a second. We are not treating diseases as good as we can. We're flipping the coin. We're imposing a lot of serious adverse events and quite a lot of deaths every year. Let's not mention our reputation, which is at the tobacco level, tobacco industry level. And we're not returning value to shareholders. So we are doing particularly well for our patients, or as good as we could. We are not offering every single patient insight and knowledge to their particular treatment. And in addition to that brilliant uh, status, we are no longer returning value to shareholders. So there is a, somewhat of, a, of what I would call a pretty damn hot platform. This is what it takes, whether it's 1 billion euros, I'm speaking euros, but it's a little bit more dollars, if whether it's 1 billion or 2, it's 12, 15 years from start to end, and it's a lot of money. And it's still exactly the same business model we've had over the last many decades. We have not changed our business model at all. And even though we hear discussions popping up, I see meetings around open innovation uh, arising in the horizon, we're still doing exactly the same. I don't believe this is viable. I think many people will agree it's not viable. So what do we have to do to change that? Well, one thing that many brilliant minds thought would be the way out would be to do mergers and acquisitions. Here we see that if you're a big, large company, those that really do the big mergers, it does not change the output of new innovation. We do not innovate more by putting you know, a lot of uh, companies into huge mega structures. You know, the fact is that we still have the same molecular output, which we also heard yesterday is falling, or at best is flat. So why is we investing more? And whilst we are having a flat or declining output, we thought that fixing that would be mergers and acquisitions. I think that's, that's not the solution. Having one broken business model, merging that with another company with the same broken business model, isn't exactly necessarily going to give you a better business model. So here is the question. That's the best picture I could find of with the, with the word blockbuster in it. And I would absolutely agree we are at the end of the blockbuster era. There is no idea, there is no value for patients, there is no value for shareholders. It is not a viable business model. It is well known amongst business scientists that it is better to change before you have to. It's a well-known fact. Unfortunately, we haven't managed as an industry to do so. We have been riding on the financial and revenue wave, the blockbuster wave, if you may, and we have been ignoring the fact that we, it would be a good idea to change that business model before we had to. One of the reasons, in my view, again, I'm a physician, so I'm, I'm taking a look a little bit differently, is we may not have thought about the patients in due time. I would, I would, I would use the word, this is a bit arrogant. It's, it's a bit arrogant not to put your those people they're doing this for in the center. We have totally forgotten there are actually patients at the other end of our production line, of, of our food chain, and really trying to understand what they're looking for and that they're different. There are some very good reasons why we haven't been able to do that properly. Partly because of the uh, inability to appropriately manage the amount of data that we have, uh, that we have generated. I know of no company globally who are in complete control of all of their data. No company who are in complete control of all of their data. 
They're lying here and there and there, and they do not, uh, they're not easily accessible to every single decision maker or scientist in a form or in a way that you can actually rapidly make decisions. This is quite embarrassing and one of the key challenges for us not having been able to change the business model yet. That has to be fixed. 